Zach, what's up? What it do, Rome? How you doing? What it do, Zach? What it do, man? How's your <laughs> life going, bro? It's going great, man. I'm, I'm sitting here in the Jim Rome studio right now. Never thought this would happen, but to tell you the truth, about three months ago when we just got back from Aussies and I sat down with my uh, friend slash uh, marketing agent, uh, John Gus, and I said, we need to get on the Jim Rome show. Whatever it takes, let's get on it. And I mean, that's kind of how I started my website, started making videos here and there. And that's when I came with the Lions. And once I made the Lion video, I figured, hey, if this is the one that's going to do it, this is it. And next thing you know, I get an email from ESPN saying, Jim Rome wants you on the show. I, I was screaming like a little girl. To tell you Dude, it was awesome. But I know you did not make that Lion video to get on this show for me. What puts a cat in a cage with Lions? I mean, I get this whole Lion thing. But what were you doing with the Lions? Man, well, honestly, I step into this cage. Uh, my neighbor uh, actually owns a cat haven up there in uh, above Fresno. And when I first got drafted, they allowed me to go in there and take a picture. It was real kind of secured, and I wasn't going to get hurt, so that was calm. And then now I was going back in the offseason. I said, hey, I called them up. I said, hey, I want to run this idea by you. What if I come in there with a cage, have my Lions jersey on, got the helmet for protection, and I go in there and learn a few tips about what can make me more aggressive? Because there's no other way to learn from a Lion than go down and run down on kickoff and kill somebody than learning from a Lion. So uh, I went in with the cage, and uh, and it was all an effort to help raise money, too, because after telling me the struggles they're going through to help try to save these cats, so I kind of turned it in to help, uh, help raise money for them as well. All right, so it's a good cause, and you're looking to find this, this edge and this toughness and get this angle. Dude, it's a good thing the Bears didn't draft you. Then what? Hey, to tell you the truth, I don't know. I am kind of scared of grizzly bears. They're a thousand pound beasts, and I, I think we all know the. Uh, Everybody is afraid of grizzly bears. <laughs> After the, uh, I think the grizzly man got eaten uh, in his own show. I don't think I'm gonna be messing with some grizzly bears. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised that happened. Anyway, I'm gonna keep moving. <laughs> but if you spend enough time around a grizzly bear, there's a pretty good chance. <laughs> putting aside that guy for a minute, if you spend enough time around a grizzly bear, chances are you might get eaten. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. So it's a good thing. Yeah, but knowing you, dude, you probably would have gone in anyway. Yeah, gone you know, in. Just in the name of getting an edge and helping out a good cause. Yeah, basically. Uh. <laughs> Zach, you talked about getting drafted. Now, one of the ways we came to you, I'm on the West Coast. I saw you at Cal, so I knew already. But when you came out, you had this unbelievable highlight package, a great, great package of you basically knocking out suckers and lighting up fools, and it was awesome. Where did that come from? Who put that together? Tell you the truth, man, I, I put that together myself, staying up to about 3 in the morning. Uh, I went to my, my film guy at Berkeley, and I said, hey, give Dude, me all the like footage. like a high school kid trying to get a scholarship. You did that yourself. That wasn't an agent or a marketing firm? No, no. You cut that yourself. No agent or anything. It was myself. I went to the guy, and I said, hey, Here's a floppy, not a floppy, a USB drive. Put on all my highlights that I, I've done, and I'm going to go make this video myself and try to get myself out there and get fans coming my way. So he gave me the disc, and, I mean, from 2007, 2008 highlights, I sat down on my Windows Media Maker and uh, Final Cut Pro on the Mac, and I put this thing together, added some, added some music, highlights, clipped it up, and pretty much just taught myself. And, I mean, now it has over 43,000 views, and the other one has about 25,000 views, so... I mean, I'm, I'm, I, since I was a little kid, my dad taught me how to be an entrepreneur, and I've been doing that ever since. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. You taught yourself how to do it. You did it yourself. You're a YouTube sensation. It found its way to me. I saw it. The people love it. Do you think it helped you get a job and get the word out in the NFL? I mean, well, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, to tell you the truth, if that did, because my highlight, they were pretty sick. I did lay some fools out, but I thought, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a second, third round kind of highlight tape. But, you know, I fell to the later rounds, but I think that's how God intended for me because I wasn't ready for the NFL, all the money that I was going to bring. But, uh, I mean, after, after they saw the film and my, my highlight, they didn't think that I had it because you look at me and I'm, I'm by the eyeball. I don't pass the physical test. They don't think that I'm athletic enough to make it. But that's when you put me on the field. I said, just give me a shot. You put me on the field, and I'm going to run down and hit someone as hard as I can and show you that I belong on the field. And knock some fools out. Zach Follett joining me. You know, that's really interesting what you just said that you thought that that highlight reel should have put you in the third round, maybe the second round, but you just said you weren't ready. You weren't ready for the sort of money and what comes along with being in the NFL. Listen, you come from a pretty small town. You're grounded. You have your faith. Why do you think you wouldn't have been ready for that? I mean, because it's, it's easy. You, got, you come in the NFL, and I mean, I have so many testimonies and stories of once you're in the NFL, you go somewhere, and I, I mean, I had, to tell the truth, Playboy bunnies coming up to me asking to put my number in their phone. I didn't even come up to them. And, I mean, it's, it's a different world. you got people coming at you left and right, people coming for money. And, I mean, once you – I get all this money in the NFL, and first thing you think, oh, he has more money, he's going to give more. Wrong. You know what I mean? I, I, I grabbed that money around my chest, and I said, well, yeah, I got a lot of money, but I don't have enough money to, to buy that house on the lake I want to buy, this and that. I mean, through a bunch of teaching from God, and he's been working on me, 
he's taught me that's not the right way to do it. And, I mean, he's kind of been molding me into the person that I am today. Interesting. And money's a funny thing, too, because if you've never had money and then all of a sudden you have what seems like a lot of money, it's not a lot of money. For instance, if you get five hundred dollars or $700,000 a year, you can't spend it like it's five or $10 million a year because it's not, even if it feels that way. Exactly, man. I mean, I'm definitely no Matt Stafford money, but uh, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I got, I got my $22,000 signing bonus, which was very humble. And, I mean, in the NFL, you try to live the what NFL did, what life. What did you do with it? I put it in the bank and, I mean, bought some furniture and paid for rent in my apartment. Smart. Yeah, so, I mean, my dad taught me the right way, so... Zach, what about, I mean, Matt Stafford, he, he's the guy, he's the franchise, he's the quarterback, he deserves the money. You're not going to begrudge the guy the money, but he's got to be the leader, right? The guy that everybody looks to. So if you've got that guy and he's got all that money, it, it kind of explained to me the dynamics of a locker room. How does it work when guys are paying a price and killing themselves and not making near what that guy is? How does that guy fit in with everybody else? Well, I mean, just to go with Matt, I, I'm so impressed by him to be an instant over, over-the-night millionaire like he is and to stay humble as he is. And he talks to me, a seventh-round guy, he talks to me like I was any other guy. So, I mean, Matt definitely is that is that leader of Detroit. And, I mean, you guys all saw that in the Cleveland game. He came back after that separation of his shoulder. But, man, you're right. I mean, I see these guys signing with the Lions, and, and it's like I'm sitting there just shaking my head like I'm going to be doing – 10 times more reps than them during practice. I'm going to be running, hitting guys hard where they're going to be standing around by the cooler. And, I mean, I'm making the, the, the lowest. But, I mean, it makes me hungry and it keeps me the way I am. You know, you mentioned what you're going to have to do. I asked Jim Schwartz, I mean, is this your lot in life? I mean, look, you could have a really nice career if you're a guy who just killed it on special teams. You get that C on your uniform. You're always out there. You make a name for yourself. You maybe make it to the Pro Bowl. It's a good life. Are you going to accept that as your life or do you want more? No, man, I definitely want more. I didn't come to the NFL to be a special teams player, to tell you the truth. I'm going to get out there, and I had a talk with uh, Gunther Cunningham today. He said, hey, if you get this stuff down, you could be a starter for us next year. And, I mean, that was more motivation than I needed than anything. That, right after that run, I hit the weight room, probably the hardest I've ever hit the weight room in my life, to tell you the truth, with that, after hearing that. So I'm going to be doing what I need to do, but, I mean, it's more than just the physical. It's the mental part. The mental part of the NFL is a whole other beast, man. It's harder than Cal- college at Cal Berkeley, to tell you the truth. What? What's so tough about it and what's different? Um, just the scheme. I mean, because you come from one scheme that you've been bred by so many coaches of how to play football. Then you come and, you come and step into this another program where they're telling you something totally different. The terminology, it's like you have to learn a new language. And the playbook is they're putting in things left and right and – I mean, I, I was a seventh-round guy, so I didn't get every rep, so I'm trying to learn by watching. And, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not much of a visual learner. I need to be in there, be in there, learn by my mistakes and grow from that. So we'll see if I can get my uh, feet under me this time. How about this? I had Nick Barnett on my TV show the other day. That so you're be, learning a new system, a new playbook almost every single year. Yeah, that would be a headache, man. That would definitely be a headache. But, I mean, if you get your feet under you in the NFL and you learn the system, life's about systems. In, in college, high school, you don't have to be the smart. I'm not the smartest guy by far, but if you learn the system of where you're at and you learn how to, to master that system, you can find a way to get what you need. Here's what I want to do, Zach. It's a great segment. I need to take a break right now. I want to open it up to the listeners. I want them to call you and kind of wrap you, chat with you. And hey, listen, how, how's your Twitter account going? Twitter's blowing up. Are you up. into it? Yeah, I'm into no, it. No, it's not, bro. You got like 300 followers. <laughs> I, I bet we could get... Five hey, times good, that yeah, amount by the end of the thousands. segment. My boy Jay Stu's been pumping it up. What is what is the address? Where can they follow you? Um, it's at Zakarian Follett, Z-A-K-A-R-I-N, Follett, F-O-L-L-E-T-T. I'm going to hit that again on the other side. I want to see what that number's at before we're done. More <laughs> with Zach Follett. Stay tuned. Yeah. There you go. Give it to him again. Now, we were rushed at the very end. If they want to follow you on Twitter, what's your address? It's a Zakarian, at Zakarian Follett, Z-A-K-A-R-I-A-N. Follow F O L L E T T. And I, there's a Karen, that's my Armenian. I'm 50% Armenian, so I have to give the fans, let them know that there's an Armenian in the NFL. We're a rare breed. Got to represent. Yeah, I like represent. that. During the break, he didn't tell me what it was, but KB said you came bearing gifts and that it's, quote, awesome. So let me see what this is about, man. Free is me. I like it. What do we got? Oh, bro, the logo. <laughs> the logo. The logo. Looked the show up. logo. The JR logo. I made the whole thing. That's incredible. Made it in my house Let's- last night. You made that last night. In my, I turned my spare bedroom into a wood shop. Yeah. Come on now, tell me about that. What is that made of exactly? Tell me all about the, it. The wood uh, is a plywood piece I went and bought from uh, Lowe's. They they got the hookup on the wood, and then the back is some diamond plate metal, and kind of that's the background. I cut it out, uh, trace it, cut it out, paint it, and I, I did the jungle theme, you know, because Welcome to the Jungle in the Rome show. So I had to bring that, bring a little spice to it. Oh no, this thing's awesome, and you painted it. Painted it myself. Yeah, acrylic paints, painted uh, black, orange. 
with a little bit of uh, art. Yeah, a little bit of art. I do have an artistic side as well. Clearly. All right, so what we're going to do, first of all, Zach, first of all, thank you very much. No Love problem, that. Man. We're going to rock that thing. When I get that back to L.A., we'll put that up in the office. I'll find the right spot for, for it. Sure, man. Before I do that, though, and that's respect. I know you're not doing that if that's not out of respect.